evening and welcome to service tonight. We're glad that you are here. Uh, we've come to worship God. Thanksgiving is over, but I hope the spirit of thanksgiving and thankfulness is still with us as we move into the Christmas season. And <clears throat> I, um, I try to focus my reading around that to prepare my heart and, re and think about the one who came for us. And this morning, I was, as I was reading a verse that um, you all know well, in fact, it may be on the walls of many of your homes, and it's this reminder of the God who says, um, I have plans for you of hope and a good future. The God who looks ahead and sees the whole thing and speaks to us in whatever condition we're in tonight to offer us hope, that expectant waiting of something good. And I hope that you trust that you came tonight with that hope, expecting something good for God. We're waiting on him to come and to move in our midst and in our hearts. Let's come to him with a, an expectant hope that he's the one who makes the difference for whatever it is that we are facing in life. Let's pray together as we, um, we begin this service with a spirit of worship. Father, come and speak to us. We know that you're here with us as we've gathered in your name to worship you, to learn from you, to hear from your word, to sing and to praise together. And will you give us ears to hear from you and a heart to obey, I pray. And now may you be honored and glorified in all that is done in this service tonight. Amen. Amen. 348. Let's begin with that song. He touched me. He touched me. Aren't you glad for his touch? Praise God. Sing it right out.
down at the Chinese church at the end of service, the pastor asked for people to just give a short testimony of what they were thankful for. There was a lot of different things, but then a lady stood up who was baptized about a week ago, and she said, I am thankful because a year ago I didn't know Jesus, and tonight I do, or today I do. There is no one more wonderful thing to be thankful for than that we are saved, saved, saved wonderful to have that testimony as we go to prayer a lot of physical needs let's pray for Marianne Hinton Kevin Spriggs uh, Gary Spriggs John Chamber let's pray for him and then a lady from our community who has asked for prayer Suzanne Carr let's pray for her pray especially for the Stidell family with the loss of uh, Doug and then this week a lot of people will be joining us for the singing tree Let's pray especially that God will speak to the hearts of those who come and don't know him, that this will make an eternal difference in their lives.
please stand and uh, Dr. Dewhurst is going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Kind Heavenly Father, we do so thank you so much for bringing us successfully almost completely through another year. And Lord, as we've gathered together with friends and family, we're just so thankful for your care. We're so thankful that we get to be in this place. We're so thankful that as we look across this crowd, we see examples of your mercy and your care. We see little Kate that you've brought back to us from the hospital and, and countless others throughout this congregation that you've had your hand on and you've touched them. But Lord, there are still many sick amongst us. There there are families that are that are grieving as, as loved ones, perhaps, or even close to death, and we see the, the names that scroll across the screen, and we lose count for how many of our friends that we're praying for. But Lord, would you continue to undertake, would you continue to work in their lives and apply the balm of Gilead? Lord, we also look across this congregation, and we see that there are many in this year that have lost loved ones, countless in this congregation. We think of the Stydells who are grieving. Lord, would you be the comforter that we need? Would you work with our ministries, with the, the request of the school, with the request of the church and FEA and HIM? We think specifically of the students that are still going to be traveling and staff that are going to be traveling in from, from being with family. Would your hand rest mightily on the people of Israel, your chosen people? Would you protect them and help them? Give us a great uh, financial day on, the, on Giving Tuesday. Would you help us to meet our needs and, and finish out this, this year with being able to uh, be faithful to our obligations. But Lord, we especially turn our attention to the ministries that we've reached out to Payson Park as a church and we planted those seeds and all three ministries have been involved in that. We think of the seeds that were planted at the fall festival. But Lord, there'll be countless uh, ones that'll be coming over these four days to the Christmas tree. And Lord, would you, would you rest on those of us who will be spreading the gospel through song? Would you rest on those that are here Hearing that your presence would be there would be more than entertainment, but you would reach souls for the kingdom. Lord, help us as we go into these holidays that we'll remember that we need you in our homes. We need you with our families. Would you strengthen us? Would you draw us step by step closer to each other? Help us to be a shining light amongst our families. Lord, would you rest your presence upon us? Draw us closer to you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
thankful for a redeeming love that has no limit. Praise his name. Thank the Lord. Thank you for that offertory tonight. As the trio is preparing to sing, I'm going to share just a few quick announcements. As we mentioned this morning, uh, this evening we are going to be moving the hymn books and preparing to take everything over to uh, begin having services in the tabernacle. After uh, we move the books over there, we're just going to take a moment to spread out around the tabernacle in a circle and have a time of prayer for the singing Christmas tree and the ministries that will be taking place this next week, praying for the many, many people involved and that God's blessing that it would uh, be, be more than just a performance, that it would be a ministry to the people that come to, to see it. Um, the service schedule, Sundays will be in the tabernacle, Wednesdays will be taking place, Wednesday night services will be right here in the CEC, and then the scene Christmas tree will be Thursday through Sunday. The doors open at 6 o'clock, it begins at 7, and we want to encourage you all, if you would be able to, on Wednesday, there won't be a normal service, but there is uh, technically a dress rehearsal on Wednesday evening in the tabernacle for the tree. We'd encourage you to be here for that and to be the audience to help um, give the people to sing, somebody to sing to as they practice and as they prepare to minister to our community. Let's continue to worship as the trio sings.
Amen. He's all of those things, but I'm so glad for that personal, that personal thought that I call him Lord. Amen. I'm glad he's my Savior, and I'm glad he's my sanctifier. He's my keeper, and I'm thankful for who he is to me. And I hope that you can join in. Is everyone awake this evening? Just wondering. <clears throat> With the Lord's help, uh, we're going to, to speak to us just as, as, as the church tonight and a challenge to us as Christians with the Lord's help. But before we get started, I do want to remind you as we're moving songbooks after the service, uh, John Budenseek needs four guys, four guys to help him move the beast over there to, uh, to the tabernacle for its... Uh, months of service there. So if you're able to help uh, with that, he'd love to see you after the service. Tonight, I just would like to share with us from various passages of Scripture, but uh, just a, a, a thought that's been on, on my mind and a challenge that I, that I feel like God has been uh, working with me in my life and uh, I, I hope that it doesn't come across in any way, shape, or form uh, overtly negative. That's not my intention because sometimes you balance between a challenge and, and uh, being negative. And that's not my intention whatsoever. But a challenge that God would help us uh, in the area, in the realm of prayer. And we need God to help us here. We live in a spiritual wilderness. I know that's just a powerful way to start an evening message. It's dark, discouraging statement, but I believe that, that it's closer to truth than we might want to admit. I fear that we've, we've been wandering about in the desert for too long while God is desiring for us to move into greener pastures and, and really truly enjoy that, that land, so to speak, filled with milk and honey away from the wanderings in a wilderness. God wants, us to move, wants to move us beyond our lives of anemic faith. If we're honest with ourselves as Christians, we're lacking in power, divine, mind-boggling, life-altering power. While we have wandered about in the wilderness chewing on tiny, semi-nutritious clumps of self-ability and dependence and wisdom, we walk about and we discover quickly that our ability, dependency, and wisdom aren't nearly enough to sustain ourselves in the powerful place that God desires us to be. We know that there is something more, something better, but we seem to lack the drive or maybe the strength to move out of the realm in which we are in into that grassier, greener realm that God would have us to go. We talk about what needs changed. We dream of those better days of yesteryear, and, and we hope that somehow, somewhere, someone will come along and get us moving out of the condition that we find ourselves in. Generations are coming and going without seeing God's great moves. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thankful for the mercy drops that round us are falling. Don't misunderstand me. I'm thankful for the times that God shows up and His presence is close and near. But it's for His showers that we plead tonight. We need something that's more than mercy drops. We need something that a generation today can once again stand and say, I have truly seen the hand of God moving in a powerful, real way, and I'm settled forever. He is where I will turn. They've not seen those great moves, perhaps of some in the past, and, and their faith is floundering. A younger generation is not hearing of the miraculous answers to prayer that at one time were commonplace. The word miracle is almost scoffed at. Some have come from great family heritage, and I'm not saying for a moment that that is the key to anything, but, but those who have come from some of the great heritage of, of holiness, they're so weak spiritually that they're questioning even if, if there's really anything to what we know as Christianity. Yes, I'm convinced that we may just find ourselves in a spiritual wilderness, whether we want to admit it or not. 
And ladies and gentlemen, we must, I say, we must see a new work among us in our day and age. We must see an awakening that shakes us from our complacent places and our little la da dispositions. If we're going to see future generations come to life in Christ and thrive, we need to see God come on the scene like never before. And I'm here just to challenge us tonight to say that new beginning begins with us, us right here in this place, in this room this evening. I say to us, it's time for us to stop passing the buck and blaming everyone else for the spiritual wilderness the church finds itself in. The issues that you might be thinking of very well could be part of of why the church, in, in general sense and terms, is in such pitiful states. But let me be clear, our wandering in the wilderness is no one else's fault but our own. Oh, we might lament from time to time at the dwindling size of the church. We might genuinely sorrow over the many who leave to take a lesser way. We might be heartbroken over children who seem uninterested in God. And yes, we might even cry at the thought of the barren altar that hasn't really produced much over the years of late. This sadness might be how we truly feel. And in our efforts to figure out why, it's easy to begin to look around and to blame others for the falling away and for the cooling down and for the lack of power in the churches that we might sense. It's easy to blame styles. It's easy to blame differences. It's easy to blame opposition for the reason of it all. And while these things might have some sort of part to play in it all, I would submit to us tonight that these things are merely peripherals. And long-term good has never come from attacking peripherals. If we're going to see the change that the church desires to see and must see, then ladies and gentlemen, we need need to ask God, what is the root of all of this? And then ask God to help us to search the root. Peripherals will change if we focus on the root. If we're going to see the change, we must find the root. What then, you say, is the root of the problem? One might say, well, you know, there just seems to be a lack of faith. Someone might suggest that it's, it, it, it could probably help if there was stronger preacher on more things. Someone might throw out the idea that the root of the problem is really a lack of commitment. People just aren't committed these days. And all of these things might have some partial correctness to it. But I think if that's just the road we go down, we're still going to miss the root of the problem. If we stop there, we're stopping short. What then would you suggest, Pastor, that would be the root of the problem? Well, I'm glad that you asked, because I would submit to us tonight that the root of the problem of our dry, brittle, scrawny, withering being as churches and Christians is that we have ceased to understand and grasp and be people, real people of prayer. Oh, we all pray. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here throwing stones and saying that we just walk around without any prayer. We all participate in the spiritual disciplines of Bible reading and prayer as we should. Ladies and gentlemen, let us never think for a moment that every time we enter into the place of prayer, it's going to be as heaven comes down and glory fills our soul and we're just going to be movers and shakers. No, there is a place for that, that discipline, that spiritual discipline of prayer and reading and prayer and reading. But that's not really what I speak of really tonight. Uh, our prayer times have, 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 have little by little, it seems, maybe yours hasn't, but I've sensed it in my life, become a little cool, a little cold, maybe a little lifeless. Our prayer times can quickly become more uh, boxes that we check, names that we just read off of a list, and quickly move on, feeling satisfied that we've done our part. Again, I'm not scoffing at that. I'm not saying that that's not needed, but hear me out. 
But if we're going to talk about the root of the problem, let's honestly ask ourselves this question. When was the last time that we were personally involved in that intercessory prayer for a circumstance, a serious need, the salvation of a soul? When was the last time we were driven to our knees because the burden was so powerfully on our shoulders that we could not eat? We did not want to partake in the pleasurable things of this world. We couldn't sleep. The burden was was real the passion was real and we were nothing more but driven for that intercessory prayer for the need of God to really truly move and work in the situation at hand if we were honest I'd say that many times we would admit that that uh, that when we've seen those broken relationships those circumstances that that seem to be causing an unhealthy division or situations that might just seem to be just outlandish and impossible we might find it easier to shake our heads, point a finger, and talk about it amongst our friends rather than to take it to the place of prayer to the one who has the power to change and alter the circumstances that are so closely connected to us as people. Dear friends, I would say to us we should remember that blaming others simply makes us weaker. But I'm here to say that if we will grasp this, we'll find that prayer will make us stronger. Blaming only solidifies that which we already know. We're mere people. We're weak within ourselves. We're, our, our framework work is frail. But friends, prayer brings these needs before God, the one who can and still does work miracles, change hearts and minds, and break down barriers that only He is capable and able to do. There is a reason that we're watching a generation of believers grow more sickly than ourselves. We're not, as a generation now, providing them with meaty substance for them to witness and to believe in. Friends, I'm thankful for those times that there were men and women who prayed and were in the prayer rooms before a service, and, and they were in the prayer rooms before revival times, and camp meetings was carried by prayer, and evening services were carried by prayer, that God showed up on the the scene. God made himself known, and it was in those moments that something deep inside of me was touched and realized this is something that's real and powerful and genuine, and this is something, if I could say it without sounding, sounding chintzy, this was something that I wanted to hitch my wagon to and stay with because God had made himself known. We need to see more and more of the, the moving of God in our services, in our times of gathering, so that a younger generation, even though they might not understand it, could set up and take notice that God is here and something is truly different. They're not seeing the powerful moves, the miraculous works, the mighty deliverances that I believe that God really truly wants us to see. The reason of this, friends, lies at our doorstep. We can no longer continue blaming and pointing fingers. God, help us to step up and take responsibility for the condition of the wilderness wanderings that we're weak and scraggly Christians. We need to understand that weak and scraggly Christians are going to produce nothing more than weaker and more scraggly Christians. God, would you help us to get a hold of what prayer really is and see a strengthening within the body of Christ that will help solidify for this generation and generations look on that God is still on the throne, God is still wanting to work, and God is still interested in doing great and mighty miraculous things. It's time that we as Christians do something about changing the spiritual tide and temperature of the church world in general, and also Hope Sound Bible Church included. And where do we see this begin? We see it begin in the place of prayer. It's time that we ask God to help us reignite the place of prayer. It's not something that we will accomplish on our own. 
we're not going to wake up tomorrow morning with a brand new passion, a new burden for prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to see God transform our lives in prayer times in church through prayer, we're going to have to take some time in being intentional, seeking His face, asking Him for a God-given burden for situations, people, and prayer like never before. And then when He does so, not just say, thank you, Lord, for that. I feel a little better. But then act upon it. Allow ourselves to, to pray and fast and to give up whatever it is, to get alone in the presence of God and to call on him that we might see him move lord give us that burden in matthew chapter 17 we know the familiar story of of a of a group of disciples that that were asked to cast out a demon and and uh they they weren't able to do that and the 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 man goes to jesus and says listen your disciples couldn't but will you and and he does and and when they see this happen the disciples ask jesus in maybe a more embarrassed way why could we not do that and what are we missing that that uh, that we could not do that and i understand that they were talking about casting out of demons but i believe if we could put that in in modern day uh, aka we could say simply this Why is it that we cannot fight and win against the devil with such power that we ought to be seeing it done? And I think the answer that was given to them, threefold answer, is an answer that we need to look at even amongst ourselves today. And the answer is this. You have a lack of faith. There seems to be a lack of prayer, and there's a lack of fasting. Well, uh, I just want us to understand that, that today that God wants us to strengthen our faith. He wants us to become stronger in our faith. And if we will become stronger in our faith, it will empower us in the place of prayer. And when we find Him helping us in the place of prayer, we'll find ourselves willing and ready to give up the, the pleasures and the, and, the, and the pleasantries of this world that we might see the kingdom of God advance. Friends, nothing has changed. And if we want to see God at work in such a way that others stand back in amazement and a new generation just stands in awe, their faith strengthened, then friends, I say, God help us to have a faith that falls on our face before God in prayer and saying, I'm willing to forsake whatever that we might see the glory of God among us. And I believe if God would help us to accept this challenge, we are going to have to start with our faith. How is our faith tonight? Do we genuinely believe that God can indeed do anything? Do we sincerely believe Jesus' words when he said, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible? Do we really truly believe that God can do absolutely anything? If God would help us in our faith, he will help us in our prayer. And and, and through faith, he will help us to, to grab a hold of these three promises of prayer, for that I'm sure. I would like to say this. First of all, we, as we examine these promises of prayer that will help us in guiding our, our time of prayer and help solidify what we're doing is right and good and, and beneficial, that we're going to have to understand in a fresh way that the promises of prayer are sure. They are sure. John chapter 16, we read Jesus is telling his disciples about about the crucifixion that was so, so near upon them. He was soon going to be gone and no longer with them. And, And he tells them, listen, to this point, you've made your request to me. You've come to me, I've just been here, and says, I need this, I need that, and can you do this, would you do that? And and the the request came right there, face to face. But he's telling his disciples, that is all about to change. The disciples had never prayed in Jesus' name before. They prayed to him, would you? They asked him right there. He was with them. But before long, this was going to be their method of operation No longer would they ask Jesus for an inquiry or assistance. Listen to the words of Jesus when he says, In that day you will ask nothing of me. 
That seems a little discouraging, but he goes on to say, truly, truly, I say to you, but whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Another portion of Scripture in John 14, verse 13 says, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. While this passage, I understand, refers particularly to his disciples in their work in spreading the gospel, I think it's true of all Christians that if they will ask in faith in accordance to the will of God, he still is in the prayer and hearing and prayer answering business. Ladies and gentlemen, the promises of prayer are sure. What we pray for will produce an answer when we ask and pray for it in accordance to the will of God. One of the significant shifts that we might need to make in our time of prayer that sometimes if we're not careful, we can find ourselves consumed with a, uh, uh, with a, a substantial portion of our prayer time uh, being more self-focused and, and about our wants. And please don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting for a moment that we cannot or should not bring our personal needs and wants to the Lord. He encourages us to do so. But I'm just simply saying, Lord, help us not to allow them to hijack those times of prayer when we can be praying for some things of great, great need around us. There's a lost world that's dying and on their way to hell there are are families that are crumbling about us and ladies and gentlemen listen, I would like a new set of tires and I would like a, a new this and that just as much as the new person and if they're in need it's wonderful to take to the Lord but I want to tell you something he wants to hear from a burdened heart of a lost neighbor, a lost friend, a family that's falling apart heart and saying, God, I can't, but I know it's your will that it be. And so, God, I'm going to carry this burden until we see you move and at work in this circumstance. You say, well, I don't understand what the will of the Lord. How do we understand all of that? Well, I don't know that it's going to be the same in every situation, but I do know that the Scripture is very clear about some things that is God's will. Can I tell us right now that it's always God's will that sinners be converted? It's always God's will that a sinner come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's always God's will that a backslider be reclaimed. It's always God's will that new believers be sanctified holy. It's always God's will that families be healed and brought together. It's always God's will that addictions be broken. It's always God's will that divisions cease. It's always God's will that forgiveness be given. It's always God's will that people would hear the the call of God and they would answer and they would go. It's always God's will that He be glorified and people would be amazed at His mighty works. So you say, well, I really don't know how to pray in such a manner. I'm here to tell you that we need to be sure of the promises of prayer and that is that they are sure they can be trusted and when God said, I want to see everyone come to Jesus, when I want to see the prodigal brought back into the fold, when I want to see hearts purified, ladies and gentlemen, if God would help us to catch a little glimpse and a burden of intercessory prayer and get on our knees and say, Lord, whatever it takes to see a sinner saved, a a heart purified, a family restored, then God, I want to pray until I touch heaven. Friends, I believe if we would do it collectively and individually, God would show up and miracles would happen and a younger generation would hear a testimony as the Sutherlands has told told many times on a Wednesday night headed for divorce but God but God but God stepped in and made a difference ladies and gentlemen our children still need to see that God is still interested in doing these great and mighty things the promises of prayer are sure But I think we also need to be understanding that through faith, the promises of prayer are simple. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. We must consider these three words, ask, seek, and knock. They include words like want and the loss of something in an earnest heart. I'm afraid that at times we overcomplicate things. Somewhere along the way, we've bought into the idea that anything to do with God must be hard and laborsome. 
But we often need to be reminded that the ways of Christ are simple. I didn't say that they're going to be easy, but I'm going to say they're simple. What do you need to do if you want to be a Christian? You need to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Him. Really, that's quite simple. Is that easy to do in ourselves? Absolutely not, but it's quite simple. What must we do? Simple. So here's what he says. Ask. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of things that do not happen because we simply don't ask. Ask with confidence, faith believing that God is a prayer hearing and answering God. Have you ever had someone come to you and attempt to ask you a question that went on a piece simply because they, they didn't really have the confidence to ask? Doesn't it drive you nuts? About six sentences in, you just want to shake it out of them and say, what do you want? Just ask. We've all done it. Most of us have. Those who have it, you've never even attempted to ask. I remember doing it to my parents. I've done it to many, but I've done it to my parents. Dad, Mom, do you remember the kid whose mom you met at Bobby's birthday party that drove the red car and lives down on, you know, five minutes later, they would cut me off and simply say, Son, what do you want? Well, simply is, Dad, can I go to the store with Steve? <laughs> I needed his permission. If the answer was yes, I was going. If it was no, there must be a reason the end. Can I just remind us the promises of prayer are simple. Ask, and God will respond. Seek. Seek. God is interested in the things that matter to us. Seek. The passage would lend, also, I, I understand, to the, needing of, uh, to the meeting of a, a spiritual need, but the promise, I believe, is applicable in every area. If you're looking for wisdom, seek it in God. If you're looking for direction in your life, guess what? Seek it in God. If you're looking for answers concerning your spiritual walk, guess what? Seek for them in God. Ask, and He will respond. Seek, and you will find. It's simple. Knock with earnestness and perseverance. My mind goes to the Scripture in Luke 18, verses 1 through 5. One through five. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always pray and not lose heart. And he said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. There was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, give me my justice against my adversary. And for a while he refused, but afterwards he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, but because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down with her continual coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here just to tell you the promises of prayer are simple. Ask and it will be answered. Seek and you will find. Knock continually earnestly with perseverance and God will hear your prayer too often we give up too quickly we pray for something a short while and I don't think living in the microwave age in which we live in today helps us in any way shape or form we pray for something for a while nothing changes we move on maybe even trying to work it out ourselves but I'm just here to say that if we want to see the power of God in our hearts and in our lives and our churches like never before let's hold on to the fact that the promises of prayer are sure and they're simple and let's close with this thought the promises of prayer are sufficient one of the major hiccups that people face in prayer is that they aren't always satisfied with God's answer in prayer we must remember that God is not a genie in a bottle that we can use for our own fancy but prayer is about seeing the will of God displayed we pray the super spiritual prayer and I don't mean that lightly Lord do whatever it takes to get my child's attention. You pray it daily. Days turn into weeks, weeks to months, months into years. Their heart seemingly grows harder, their condition more deplorable. I've talked to more than one parent in my ministry who was at wit's end saying, is it really worth praying for my lost child anymore? I've been praying for my child for years, but it seems the more I pray, the further away they go. What is happening? 
the parent who is discouraged, brokenhearted about a lost condition of their child somehow is bought into the thought that God just must not be listening. But let's remember their prayer. Lord, do whatever it takes to get my child's attention. It very well could be that the prodigal son's father prayed such a prayer. Week after week, he would hear reports of his son's embarrassing choices and stupid decisions. He would hear how he had run out of money and now he's homeless. And he would hear how someone hired him, but now he's many miles away. And rumor has it he's sleeping with the pigs and eating just the decent scraps that he can find from the pigs that he's watching over. My, oh my, as he would look down the lane and he would whisper that prayer and he would call out his son's name. It just might be that it seems the more he prayed and the longer he prayed, the deeper and the further away his son went. Let's remind ourselves this evening that God is always listening. He is always listening. He is always at work, and oftentimes in ways that we do not see, and at times in ways that we're unaware. We may not grasp it because the outcome is maybe not what we're wanting to see, or it may not happen fast enough. But listen, God is hearing and answering prayers by doing whatever it takes to get your child's attention. And there will come a time in their life, still their decision to make whatever it is, but they're going to be at a place where they realize that there's nothing left but to continue spiring completely out of control or turn to Jesus Christ for their salvation. And ladies and gentlemen, nothing that a parent wants more than to realize that their child is at a place where they are at a cross crossroads and hearing the voice of God calling them faithfully and speaking to them. Sometimes God answers come in different timetables than we would like, but let's rest assured, whatever speed He chooses and whatever answer He gives, His answers will be sufficient. Our musicians are coming. Tonight, I would submit that prayer is a key to the timetable, to the, to the uh, moving of God in our midst. Prayer is a key to seeing a new generation rise in the power of God, to sell out completely to Him, to proclaim His goodness with confidence. The answer to a powerless church as we might see it in America cannot be fixed by ascribing blame. It only hinders the process. But as individuals, we, the answer is for us to accept, embrace the task ahead, and seek God for a deep burden for prayer. And I believe that if, if God would help us and understand that the promises of prayer are sure and simple and sufficient, and if He would help us to grasp that in the place of prayer, He would help us to see some changes that have been plaguing us for too long. Plaguing families for too long. Plaguing our community for too long. God is still interested in seeing Hope Sound, Port Salerno, Tequesta, Stewart, impacted greatly through His power. And it will not happen if we wander in the wilderness only by His help that we move beyond and see His hand at work. We're going to take some time. I know we're going to have move over uh, time here in just a moment, but if you would stay, we're going to ask some just to gather in around the front here, around the altars in the front, our time of family prayer and our, our Sunday night ritual. We're gathering around, praying for each other. And let's just pray and seek God. Lord, would you help us? Give us a passion. Give us a burden. Give us a desire to see you move. If you would like to join us around the front, let's close in a time of prayer. Let's seek his face and let's pray one for another. God knows that we need each other. We need uh, uh, each other's prayers, each other's encouragement. So let's get a hold of the Lord and those who are willing to stay, then we'll move over to the tabernacle in just a few moments. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your love. We thank you for who you are. Dear Lord, we're glad that you are kind and patient and you're long-suffering. 
Dear Lord, we recognize that in a world of busyness, in a world swirling with so many things to do and, and so many appointments to be had, and, and dear Lord, just so many even good things that are happening around us. Dear Lord, it is easy for us to get caught up in the rat race of life and to get caught up in just doing things that, that God, we can, we can kind of grow cool and cold and, and a little weak and shabby in the prayer, place of prayer. And, and until, dear Lord, we, we find ourselves operating in our own self and strength and our own abilities and our own whatever, dear Lord. But uh, and in the meantime, while we, we might be able to see through abilities of, uh, of leadership Leadership on every level, dear Lord, that we pro uh, progress a little bit. We, dear Lord, we're not interested in, in, in earthly kingdoms. We're not interested, dear Lord, and and just uh, just making a little progress. Uh, we're interested in seeing, dear Lord, uh, generations of our congregation, old and middle aged and young, dear Lord, having a fresh uh, sense of the mighty moving of God, dear Lord, seeing uh, that when we depend on you and when we call on you and when we seek you, dear Lord. Lord, uh, that you respond and you, dear Lord, are interested in seeing the kingdom of God go forward, seeing your kingdom move forward. And Lord, uh, it's in those moments that, that many arguments begin to fall away and many divisions begin to, to, to fall away and, and many uh, things begin to see so it seems so insignificant. And so, Lord, we pray tonight uh, that you would give every single one of us a fresh understanding and vision, dear Lord, that, that we need need to be intercessors in prayer. We need to be people uh, who are willing to carry the burden for, for families that are in desperate need and, and children that are wandering far from God and, and community people that step into our church, dear Lord, that would sense something so real and powerful and that it would just grip them, dear Lord, until they found uh, that you are their Lord and Savior and, and, and transformational of their, in their lives. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would just help us, dear God, and, and to be people of prayer. Dear Lord, not just little uh, get me through prayers, but God, prayers that come with a burden, prayers that come with, with a drive and a compassion and a passion for others. And dear Lord, uh, uh, prayers that come, dear Lord, where we're angry at what the devil is doing and how the devil is working and, and we're tired of seeing, dear Lord, the devil just picking one off here and there and another and another and another uh, that God that we get on our knees until Lord uh, uh, heaven and earth begins to, to move on behalf of the needs of wandering people and, and broken hearts and lives. Uh, and Lord, until there's nothing more for them to do than to turn to you and find you there with open arms, willing and waiting and ready, dear Lord, to step in the situation and do what only you can do. Lord, we ask that you would help us, dear God, to be, uh, have a renewed sense of prayer and the urgency of it, that God, we would see transformation in the days ahead in the community, in our church, in our families like never before. Lord, help us to carry the burden. If we don't have one, Lord, give it to us. If we do, give us a heavier one. Give us a stronger one, we pray. There's much at stake, dear Lord. Uh, eternity's at stake, and souls need you. So, Lord, help us, we pray, to understand the beginning and the key is our time alone of intercessory prayer. You are the answer to the problems in our lives, in our world, in our church. Lord, help us, we pray. As we leave this place tonight, dear Lord, in just a few moments, as we go our ways and we face a new work week, dear Lord, we ask that you would go with us, go before us, give us the strength that we need, dear Lord, to be what you would have us to be, to live the way you would want us to live, that we might be salt and light and we might be examples in the holiest and purest way that we can, dear Lord, bringing honor and glory to you as we point people to Christ. Help us, dear Jesus, as we minister to those that are hurting, dear Lord, those that are around us that are broken and, and, and dear Lord, just having no place to turn. Lord, help us to be your hands, your eyes, your ears, your feet, your love to those, and may they find you, dear Lord, to be their satisfying portion. And God, as you would help us, as you would continue to work among us and challenge us, we pray, Lord, we'll thank you for how you speak to us and show us where we need to improve. 
And Lord, we'll thank you for your faithfulness. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen and amen. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Thank the Lord for his help throughout this day. Thank you for coming. And we'll wait as you get back to your seats for this wonderful procession. If you are willing and wedding to help us out, grab some song books out of the pews in front of you and someone Someone will be over there to tell you where to put them.